All right, so uh, finally I'm trying the EVGA SR3 Dark with the 28 goes on on LN2. So uh, rig is exactly the same. Now I only have the uh, Kimping Cooling T-Rex instead of a water block. Uh, I actually uh, uh, forgot to use the wrong, I mean the correct uh, rod. So now I have uh, a bit too short rod, rod. So I'm not using springs, but I have uh, a plastic piece between the thumb nut and the uh, aluminium extension so there should not be any risk of pins bending and uh, well you just have to use your common sense so just don't use pliers or anything to uh, tighten the uh, thumb nuts so i'm just doing uh, i'm doing finger tight i will re-tighten them when we are getting colder so for example kimpin he never uses springs pretty much he always goes like this so six channel memory everything I will uh, most of the stuff I will run in Windows 10 and uh, some I might do in server 2012 but for example Geekbench is the best performing in the latest Windows 10 so uh, I think without further ado we can get started and uh, by the way since the uh, rods uh, come from the actual uh, metal frame around the CPU. I am still using an Inferno backplate with a secondary power supply. So I just have the uh, Inferno like sandwiched underneath the CPU. So it's just uh, heavily uh, pressed towards the back of the CPU. So, th so it's not actually tightened against the board by any means. But uh, I think this should be okay. And I, I used Vaseline everywhere I even went through the uh, VRM area, so if there's any moisture building up, it should not cause a short because these CPUs draw so much power, there's real risk of serious damage if there's a short at the VRM area. Now approaching minus 10, so I will start the system now. Just to see most clear. So right, right now I'm around minus 75 degrees Celsius and uh, just doing the uh, uh, initial settings. So, uh, uh, just wait a bit so that it will focus. So uh, I will start at 5.3, I'm sure it will do that. 36 on the mesh, 1.85 input, as this CPU didn't seem to like that high input, so I will start low. 1.35 on the V-Core, because these CPUs get so hot very fast. 1.4 on the mesh voltage and same on the uh, memory controller related things. And uh, 3600, 12, 11, 10. So let's see if it will post fine. Actually, it's hard to see the uh, LEDs right now because they are hidden underneath that paper towel. But let's see. All right, so now I'm utilizing the new uh, Benchmate because it appears to have better efficiency and uh, it provides more uh, proof about your actual uh, benchmarking scores. So, or reliability. So now I will just run CityBench at 5.2 at around minus uh, 70. So let's see what the score will be. I had some issues, but let's see what happens. Yeah, the CPU is heating up like crazy. But yeah, so we have a score of 77.64. So I will push this now. It's very like, it's nearly impossible to film and run at the same time because I don't have a, a lot of space for equipment. So the cold bug seems to be around minus 105. Uh, I was hoping for like one, minus 110 or a bit colder than that, but I think the 105 is already quite good for the 28 core Xeon. So, uh, so let's see how this will run. So 
and that is the uh, rank one score in Geekbench 3 multi-core so this is probably the only uh, top global score I will be getting so, but this, anyways the score is 146,515 with a memory score of 10,647 so it's pretty much at the same level as you would get on X299 Dark pretty much no difference there CPU at 5.5 GHz roughly 1.4 volts 2.05 input and 3.5 mesh the mesh is quite bad on this CPU it cannot go above 3.5 even with 1.45 mesh uh, mesh voltage and so on and uh, 5.5 CD bench seems to be my limit also so this will not beat the uh, best CPUs which we which we're doing around 5.7 on R15 all right so the CPU will definitely not do it's quite on the edge but it will not it seems it doesn't do 5.6 on GPU Pi so that's a bit sad I will try it at 5.5 the top one score by Splave is at 5.5 so I could technically beat him if I have good efficiency so uh, I will try that now I tried high input and low input, doesn't seem to matter that much, but too low input is not stable, I confirmed that. So, uh, I cannot boot well into the OS if input is something like 1.9 or under, so need something like 2.1, just like 1700X, but yeah. Also the uh, CPU temperature monitoring it doesn't work correctly yet on this board so it's monitoring 94 degrees on the CPU so it doesn't work like on X299 Dark to monitor the die temperature to uh, determine if the thermal paste is solid or not so uh, that has to be fixed but so, so yeah so uh, that's at least one difference to X299 Dark on the SR3 Dark all right so I had many fails so always remember to uh, run the uh, uh, hardware detection at, at, I mean at full detection and not uh, at off I mean the hardware info because if you if it's at off and you try to save the validation file it will just crash the whole uh, GPU Pi application but yeah so now I finally got it so this is uh, well it's rank 1 but barely rank 1 36.132 so like 60 to 70 uh, milliseconds faster than Slave at 5.5 well, got it anyway, so it's important. And of course, you have to uh, set a high precision event timer on or enabled to uh, to uh, run this test. Uh, but it harms other benchmarks, so you should always run it at disabled for everything else. So now I will try uh, probably W Prime and similar in uh, in. Uh, in server 2012 but yeah so that's so i got two globals right now but the uh, other ones are very hard x2654k is really really hard the top score is at 5.5 that's really hard to get the load is absolutely intense but yeah let's see and that is uh, that is a w prime 1024m score of 17.111 seconds and also the w prime 32 is close on going below one second so that is quite nice so 5.5 gigahertz 1.41 volts 3.4 mesh 3600 mems so uh, yeah so it maxes around 5.5 same goes for Cinebench but Cinebench is a bit harder to pass than this but yeah so it's quite okay it's not the top score but still uh, still quite okay and that is a Cinebench R15 score of 8115 at 5.5 gigahertz, 1.45 volts, 3.5 mesh, 3600 CAS 12 mems and look it's validated by Benchmade but yeah so this is absolutely the max uh, even this was very very hard to pass it's really on the edge because of you are fighting uh, against the cold bug I mean against cold bug with uh, so large CPU 5.6 would have been awesome but that will not go but yeah, so at least it scales with volts quite well. Do I see right? So yeah, I actually have dropped one memory channel. Well, yeah, interesting. And that is a 
That is an X265 4K score of 66.33 FPS, only at 5.2 GHz sadly. 5.3 was very close on passing and I even passed at 5.4 but without the overkill. But the score was bad because you need the overkill for the best possible score. So I'm a few FPS behind the best guys obviously because of the bad CPU speed. But this is very hard benchmark to run and it can also kill CPUs so best to be cautious. But this is pretty much the uh, kind of limit of the CPU, so it cannot challenge the absolute highest scores. But yeah, so I think you need 4.9 to 5 of water to be able to get the best possible uh, scores on LN2. And that is, uh, that is Cinebench R20, score of 18,777 at, at 5. Point, this was actually run at 5.4 GHz, but I will try 5.5. This uses AVX a little bit, so it's very very hard compared to 11.5 and R15, so it's quite good result, but 5.5 would be quite good, but I'm sure it will not pass, but yeah. Alright, so that's the end of my first LN2 overclocking session with the 28 Corsion on the EVGA SR3 Dark. The board is very very solid, even for extreme overclocking like this. The Elite overclocking software is now better than before, like ever in the history of the EVGA motherboard. So now everything finally works. So voltage, adju voltage, voltage adjustments, and so on. So uh, that way it's very, very nice. So you don't have to always boot the max clock and voltages. And uh, yeah, so uh, I will be uh, posting the scores on HWBot and our local forum. So I got. Uh, global rank 1 score in uh, GPU Pi and uh, Geekbench 3 in the 28 core category. The GPU Pi was very close on uh, beating Splave, so uh, I got a bit better efficiency than him. And uh, in Geekbench 3, I am miles ahead uh, Arasanino, who was running the CPU, who was running the test at like 5.7 or similar. So that in that I'm, um, I mean, uh, in that my score is very very good. The CPU is not golden, but it's somewhat okay. So Cinebench, W Prime, Geekbench 3, GPU Pi, they all max out at around 5.5. 5.6 is instant failure in Cinebench and W Prime pretty much. GPU Pi was quite close at 5.6. There's no uh, base clock adjust, uh, adjustment at all, so I cannot like I cannot fine tune the uh, clock too much. And the uh, for some reason the in the screenshots the base clock is jumping all over the place so it's not like that steady 100 it's like 99.8 or similar but yeah so uh, two global rank one scores quite okay scores in X265 Cinebench and similar the X265 4K I was quite annoyed because it uh, always crashed like at at around like half of the benchmark at 5.3 when I was running the two times overkill when the, when I didn't use overkill at all I could pass the test at 5.4 but of course the score was very very bad because you need the uh, two times overkill for the best efficiency but yeah I actually didn't test the IMC when the CPU was cold like could I like is the chance to go any higher on the frequency on the memory I didn't find that like uh, required because the CPU is my limiting factor in terms of uh, being able to get the best possible scores so uh, memory was not my limiting factor even in Geekbench so I just need a better CPU so this CPU is like somewhat average maybe a touch over average I think you need you need to be able to pass at least 4.9 in Cinebench on water with like 1.25 V core if you want the if you want a CPU that will do 5.7 in Cinebench and similar on LN2. So the uh, level is really really high what we are hunting for. It's always like that when it comes to uh, competitive overclocking when we are trying to find the best computer parts in the world for different categories. So of course it's not easy to find the best CPU in the world in uh, this 28 core category. But yeah, so that's the end of my uh, 28 core Xeon overclocking for now. I the platform is quite annoying. You it's very easy to bend the pins 
at the CPU socket. So in that regard, I don't like this platform that much compared to X299 or the mainstream 1151, for example, but it's still somewhat okay. Sadly, the, AM, the new AMD Threadripper stuff is putting uh, a lot of like shame on this platform because this is very, very expensive, but I don't know. I think it still has some uh, place in the world, but yeah. So uh, I'm sure things will improve shortly with uh, BIOS updates on, on the uh, SR3 Dark, but yeah. But other than that, if you like to see these scores, Yes, I know I have to find uh, some better way to film the actual testing because now I'm always just, just uh, showing you the actual scores which I get during my overclocking session. So I'm not doing like streams what for example Stebanzi is doing. But I just want to focus on getting the best possible scores. I don't find uh, like being fancy on camera is not my uh, most important thing. I want to get the best possible scores and show you show all of you guys what i can do with the hardware i got but yeah so i'm sure this way is just fine in the end but yeah so if you like to see these scores and my experiences with the board on lm2 then please give a thumbs up to this video and uh, subscribe to my channel and i will see you on the next one